In this video, we are going to look at how to do math problems and answer with appropriate significant figures. So the instructions say calculate the answer to the problem and then round to the appropriate number of significant figures. So the first step in all of these problems is just to do whatever mathematical operations are required. So you will need a calculator for this unless you're just a math whiz or not. So I do have a calculator here. So the first thing I'm going to do in number one um, is I'm just going to go ahead and add up all these numbers. That's 32.567 plus 135.0 plus 1.4567. I'm going to go ahead and do that to get an answer. So 32.567 plus 135 plus 1.4567. A bunch of long numbers here. And I got 169. I'm going to switch colors. 169.0237. And now I need to round my answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. So I'm going to put the two little squiggly lines that indicate that I'm rounding. And now I need to figure out how many significant figures my answer has. So we have two different rules for doing math with significant figures. One of those rules applies to addition and subtraction. And that rule says uh, that it doesn't in fact have to do with significant figures. We just look at the number of decimal places and our answer should have the least number of decimal places. So we're not even really looking at significant figures with addition and subtraction. Uh, we're just looking at decimal places, but with uh, multiplication and division, I'll put that one down here, multiplication and division, we're looking for the least number of significant figures. Least number of significant figures. I'm just going to put SF. So either way, we are looking for the least number of these things. Either we're looking at decimal places for addition and subtraction, or we're looking at significant figures for multiplication and division. So coming back to number one, all we're doing here is adding. We're not multiplying and dividing, we're just adding. So we are looking for decimal places. So all I have to do is go through, count how many decimal places each individual value in my problem has, and then select the smallest number of decimal places to use for my answer. Uh, so we're gonna do just that. So this first value here has three decimal places, three decimal places. My second value has one decimal place, and my third value has four decimal places. So the least number of decimal places would be one decimal place. So I'm gonna round my answer to just one decimal place. I'm gonna get to keep this number right here, and now I need to look at the next number to see if it rounds up or stays a zero. 2 is less than 5, so we know it's going to stay a 0, so I'm going to round 169.0. And that is my final answer to correct significant figures. Looking at number 2, we have uh, just addition once again. So we are looking at decimal places, but first we just need to add up all these numbers in fact. So I'm going to do that right now. Let's see, 246.24 plus 238.278 plus 98.3. And when I did all that, I get 582. Let's go back to blue. 582.8. 818. So now I just need to determine how many significant figures my answer should have, and then I'll round to the appropriate number of significant figures. So if we look back, uh, all we're doing is adding. So we're going to look at decimal places, not significant figures. Uh, my first value has two decimal places. My second number or value has three decimal places. And my third value has just one decimal place. So we want the least number of decimal places, which would be one. So we are going to round this answer to just that first decimal place. So instead of 582.818, I'm going to look to see if that eight will stay an eight or round up to a nine. 
1 is less than 5, so it is going to stay an 8. So my final answer is 582.8. Pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Let's erase some of these random lines that I got going on here. Let's see. Number three. Once again, all we have is addition. So this time let's do it in a different order. Before we pull out our calculator, let's figure out how many decimal places our answer is going to have. So looking at our values, we have one decimal place. We have four decimal places and we have two decimal places. So our answer should have the least number of decimal places, which would be one. So now that we figured that out, let's go back and let's add up all these numbers. 658 plus 23.5478 plus 1345.29. A lot of work in the calculator here, but it's really not too bad. So when I added all that up, I got a value of 2026, 2026.8378. We need to round that to just one decimal place. So uh, just this first decimal place, and we're looking at that 3 to determine if it rounds up to a 9 or stays an 8. 3 is less than 5, so it does stay the same. So our final answer is 2026.8. All right, number 4. This time, instead of having addition or subtraction, we have multiplication. So we're no longer looking at decimal places. This time we are looking at significant figures. So let's start by figuring out how many significant figures our answer needs to have. And remember, we're taking the value with the least number of significant figures to indicate how many sig figs our answer should have. So 23.7, that has three significant figures. They're all non-zero numbers. And 3.8 has two significant figures. So our final answer should also have two significant figures. So when we come to our calculator and multiply these two numbers together, 23.7 times 3.8, I got 90.06. Let's go ahead and write that out. 90.06, but we need to round this to just two significant figures. So we can keep these first two digits, and then we have to round. Um, so uh, we'll look at the zero to determine whether we're going to round up or stay a zero in this second, um, the tens place, or the sorry, the ones place. And so zero is, of course, less than five. So when we round, we're just going to have nine zero but there's a problem with my answer currently 90 actually only has one significant figure the way it's written because there's no decimal point fortunately for us in this case there's an easy way to fix this it's kind of a you can almost think of it as a significant figures cheat method um, all we have to do is add a decimal point at the end and that sandwiches that zero and makes that zero significant. Because now it's sandwiched between the decimal point and the nine. So now when we count, the, both the nine and the zeros are significant. But before we put that decimal point, only the nine is significant. So we do have to make sure that we add that in there so we end up with two significant figures in our final answer. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, but we do get used to these tricks. Let's see, number five, 45.76 times 0 0.25. So we're looking at significant figures because we're multiplying. Uh, that first value has four significant figures. And the second value uh, only has two because that leading zero is not significant. So this would be two sig figs. So our final answer is also going to have two significant figures. Uh, pulling out our calculator, we need to multiply 45.76 times 0.25, and I got 11.44. So let's go ahead and write that unrounded value in blue. And we need to round to just two significant figures. Right now we have four significant figures. 
Um, so we get to keep these first two digits, and then we have to use that 4 to round up or down. We are going to round uh, down to 11, so our final value is just 11. 6 says 6.47 times 64.5. Uh, so let's look. Both these values actually have three significant figures, so that makes it a little easy. So the lowest number is 3, so our final answer should also have three significant figures. Um, let's type this into our calculator and figure out what the actual answer is. Let's see. So 6.47 times 64.5. Oh, wow, I got a lot of digits here. 417.3. And of course I need to round that to just three significant figures here. So I get to keep the 4, the 1, and the 7, and then look at that 3 to round. Uh, the 3 is going to make the 7 stay a 7, so our final answer is just 417. Number 7, we have another multiplication problem. Um, so we are looking at significant figures once again. 43.678, that has five significant figures. And then 64.1 has three significant figures. So our final answer will need to have three significant figures. So let's go ahead and type that into our calculator. 43.678 times 64.1. And I got a whole bunch of digits again. I got 27. 99.7598 and I'm going to round that to just three significant figures so I get to keep the 2, the 7, and the 9 and I need to look at this 9 to tell if I'm going to round up or down so 9 is definitely bigger than 5 so that means this 9 is going to go up to a 10 but we can't put 10 here, so that actually makes this a 0. And then the next digit will round up as well to an 8. So now my rounded value um, is 280, and then a 280. And then I have this space before the decimal point that I need to hold the place value for. So I do need to fill in that space with another 0. Because uh, I think you'll agree with me if, when we say that 280 is nowhere close to 2,799. So we do need to make sure we're holding the place value of our number by filling in that placeholder zero. So now that we've done that, I look at my number and I say, okay, 2,800, that's great, that's rounded correctly, but it doesn't have three significant figures. It only has two. So the next thing I think is, okay, well, maybe I can use a decimal point. Maybe I can stick a decimal point at the end to increase the number of significant figures to make these zeros significant. But when I do this, now both these zeros are significant. Hmm. So now I have four significant figures right now. If I just put 2,800 without the decimal point, that only has two significant figures. So I have two, I have four significant figures, but I need there to be three significant figures. Sometimes we end up in these frustrating situations, and you know, you might be looking at this and you're like, there's nothing I can do, but in fact there is. This is where scientific notation comes in handy. And sometimes we have math problems where the only way we can show correct significant figures is by putting the number in scientific notation. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you why it works. So let's say um, that we want to put this number in scientific notation, so we're going to move the decimal till we get a number between 1 and 10. So that would be 2.8, which you might be saying, okay, that still only has two significant figures. Uh, but remember, I can also put a zero on the end without changing the value of the number, but now this number has three significant figures because this trailing zero, this trailing zero is to the right of the decimal point and is therefore significant. 
is significant. Yay! Smiley face. Okay, so now that we have that value, 2.80 is between 1 and 10. Now we just have to uh, multiply by some power of 10 to get back to our original value of 2800. So let's go ahead and do that, 2.80 times 10. And our power is just going to be the number of times that we moved that decimal point. One, two, three times. So times 10 to the third. And our original number was, in fact, is bigger than 2.80, so we do need it to be a positive 3. So 2.80 times 10 to the third is the final answer for number 7. And that was a good bit of work. That was probably the hardest one we've done because we had to round... Um, round all the way up to the hundreds place, and then we had to put it in scientific notation to get our correct significant figures. Let's move on to number eight. Let's see. So we have a division problem this time. Go ahead and type this into the calculator. 1.68, oops, 1.678, sometimes I, I have a fat finger, 1.678 divided by 0.42. So when I type that into my calculator, I get a whole string of digits here. I'll write them in blue. I get 3.9952, let's see, 3.8095. And while it's not really necessary to write out all these digits, um, I just went ahead and did it anyway, so we can look at it, because we haven't actually looked at how many significant figures we need. So let's look back at our values in our problem. Since it's division, we are looking at the least number of significant figures. So this first value has four significant figures, and this second value has two significant figures, because that leading zero is not significant. So our final answer actually only needs to have two significant figures. So we've definitely written out a whole bunch more places than we need to. So just to make our lives easier, I'm going to go ahead and erase, and I'm just going to leave like four or five digits here, because we know we're only going to need two in the end when we round. So let's go ahead, round, so we get to keep this this place and this place, and then we have to round. That 9 is going to make the 9 round up, so it's going to become a 0, and then a 3 will also round up to a 4. So now we have 4.0. 4 4.0, which does have two significant figures because that 0 is after the decimal point. The trailing 0 is after the decimal point here. All right, our last two problems are both division problems, so we're looking at significant figures. Uh, just looking at significant figures here. So let's go ahead and count significant figures. We have five significant figures in the first nut value, and three significant figures in the second value. So our answer will need to have three significant figures. Let's go ahead and put this in our calculator. Let's see, 28.367 divided by 3.74, and that gives me a big long string of numbers, 3.58475935, but I'm, since I only need three significant figures in my final answer, I'm only going to write out the first few digits, maybe five digits, 7.584, so I'll just write out those because I know that I'm going to round um, to less digits than I have. So then we need our little rounding symbol, and I get to keep one, two, three significant digits, and then this four is going to tell me how to round. That four is less than five, so I'm just going to round to 7.58, and that's our final answer there. Our last problem um, is division, so let's count our significant figures. 4278 has four significant figures. And then 1.006, these zeros are sandwiched between two non-zero numbers, so they are both significant. So it also has four significant figures. So that means our answer will certainly have four significant figures. Let's type this into our calculator. 4278.0. Oh, 
not point, 4278, divided by 1.006. It should be pretty close to our original value. I got 4252.485089. So let's write it out. 4252.485089. Point four eight, and I'll stop there because we know we only need four significant figures. So we get to keep one, two, three, four digits, and then that four tells us how to round. Four is less than five, so this two is going to stay a two. Four, two, five, two. That is our final answer here.